Oh, man. <laughs> So if you reach 20 amps on that circuit, it's not going to trip for plus 1,000 seconds. G'day legends, welcome back to Electrician Reacts. And this morning I woke up to a positive COVID result and I am positively feeling like crap. But I am determined to get out another one of these Electrician Reacts. So as far as I'm aware, you can't catch COVID through YouTube uh, unless of course you've got 5G. Okay, a couple of housekeeping things before I get started. I do read each and every one of the comments and I really appreciate your suggestions. Like Skellius here, he has, uh, or he or she has suggested that uh, I change the naming convention and I absolutely thought that was an amazing idea. So I have also changed all of my electrician reacts to the current convention that you see now. So Skellius, thank you so much. I do appreciate everyone's comments and suggestions. If you want to be part of this community, all you have to do is subscribe, but also hit that like button because that pumps up the algorithm. I think I've said it a hundred times, but it really helps me get motivated to make videos while I have COVID. And I particularly love it when you guys suggest channels that I can react to that I've never heard of before. So. Dan Young over here suggested, I'd like to see you react to photonic induction. Now I've never heard of this guy before. I had a quick look before. This guy looks pretty wicked. So let's just get straight into it. So here we are over on photonic inductions page. And one thing caught my eye here. In fact, there's a lot, but this one here popping a 5,000 amp fuse. This looks insane. Let's do it. Gentlemen and ladies, this video hopefully will be one of the first ever on the internet or YouTube where we're going to see a 5000 amp fuse, which is one of the biggest you can actually get, get destroyed. To destroy this, we're going to use astronomic amounts of power. The fuse itself <laughs> is rated at 5000 amps, so we're going to need more than 5000 amps to actually destroy this. It's extremely big, extremely heavy. And I think it, we need to bust it today. So um, these fuses are typically called HRC fuses or high rupture current fuses. So there's a bit of a misconception I think out there with fuses as to the rating. So if it's rated to a certain amount, it's not actually the amount that it will trip out generally. You need a significantly higher amount of current to go through these fuses. And that goes for your circuit breakers as well. So if you go to your switchboard at home, you'll probably see on the circuit breakers a small C next to the current rating. And that's actually the trip curve value. And I might just get up a table to show you exactly what that looks like. So this diagram is a really good example of a trip curve. You can see on the horizontal axes, you've got the multiples of rated current. And then on the vertical axes, you've got the seconds in which it's going to trip. So let's just say you've got a 20 amp circuit breaker, which is typical for a power circuit in Australia. And if you look at the multiples here down one, so if you reach 20 amps on that circuit, it's not gonna trip for plus 1000 seconds. And then if you go double that, so 40 amps, it's not gonna trip for 50 seconds. Remember that your cable is rated to a certain amount of current as well. So it's still gonna take at three times multiple 10 seconds before it trips. This is why it's really important to have the correct protection on your circuit. So with HRC fuses, it's actually not much different. They've got a little bit of a different curve. So here we've got an example of a 200 amp fuse on the top curve here. And you can see the rated current in amps on the side on the vertical axis. 200 amps, that curve is never going to reach. It actually has to get above 500 amps before it will trip even at one second. So a 5,000 amp fuse, I don't even know how much current he's gonna need to blow this thing up. So that's why this sparks my interest. <laughs> Let's do it. So as I say, if we put 5,000 amps through this, nothing will happen because it's oh, there you go. designed for 5,000 amps. Well, the way we're gonna to attempt to do this is using a very large capacitor bank. Each capacitor <laughs> okay. is about a thousand microfarads. That will deliver 20,000 amps, 3,000 volts, 10 of those in parallel. So we'll end up with approximately 200,000 amps. Whoa. We're going to use a pneumatic switch that can handle 12,000 amps, so that's going to suffer some damage naturally. Wouldn't be 
So pneumatic switch is telling me that he's slightly scared about actually using some sort of mechanical switch for him to actually use to lever it out. And I would be too. There's a ton of current going through this thing. Be this channel if there was no damage, would there? But uh, <laughs> certainly no bones in the carpet on this one because it's outside, rightly so. I like this guy already. What a legend. This is the current curve. Oh, you can there see you go. 5,000 amps. Five second duration. That'll handle 30,000 amps. Wow. Oh, dear, dear. That's a lot of amps. But I think we should go straight up here to 200,000 amps because that's what <laughs> the fuse can actually handle for a peak let through. There's our 5,000 amps. So we need to be in the 200 kA range to actually that's pop this. That's an insane thing. amount of current. Probably charged. Probably charged. Probably charged. Keep on a lead. <laughs> Can I say just don't try anything like this at home? I actually don't think Electro Boom has done anything this dangerous. The serious amount of current that this guy is working with is insane. That's a lot, isn't it? That's mad. Yeah. That's a lot for that. And there's a thousand capacitors out of the microwave. Yeah. Oh my god. A thousand in there. I've cleaned up these terminals just to ensure the best possible connection because we wouldn't want any losses, would we? We're getting there. <laughs> oh, look at those bars that are just like on the kink. <laughs> what? So I actually had someone ask me about like the big insulators on the high voltage power lines. Why have they got like the ribs in them? And my understanding is that actually it creates a lot more surface area. So that voltage has a lot longer space or gap for that to jump across. Now, if anybody else has any other experience with high voltage, I'd, I'd love to know your answer. But I, I do believe that is what they are for. What do you think of that then, boys? That's amazing. <laughs> that will go pop. <laughs> These are our connections on there. This is super ironic, he's using 185 lugs on these cables. Um, is actually a video I did uh, for a sponsor of mine that actually sell quite large hydraulic, electric hydraulic crimpers. So if you are interested, I'll leave a link or a card above. That's looking good. There's nothing wrong with their hand hydraulic Should ones. Trip. There's no movement there. Nice. That's a neat one, isn't it? Cool, that is a beast. All right, so, okay, he's connected those. So they're 185s, I believe he said. So I think I did this the other day and on a job for a generator and it was around 400 amps per conductor. So that would be about 800 amps um, in parallel. But what I might do is get the standard. Okay, so this is the Australian Standard 3008. And this is essentially your cable selection guide. So I can only assume that if you're in the UK or the US, you would have a similar standard. But essentially electricians and engineers use this to select their cable for whatever loading their installation will have. Now it's really important to note that uh, the different installation methods make a really big difference to the current current capacity of cables and things like that. Also, what installation you're using, what type of conductor, whether it's aluminium or copper. But I'm not going to show you how to get there. I will just show you for this particular installation what the current carrying capacity of the cables were. 
So let's do that now. So here's the table I selected, which is table four of the standard. Uh, and this is saying that it is wiring enclosed in air. That's what I've gone for. Because he has actually used some sort of trunking, I believe, on the outside. Uh, so as far as I was aware, he was using flexible cable. And if we go down to 185, which is the size of the conductor, he's actually going to get only going to get 312 amps according to the standard. Uh, so, and that is for copper. Now he's not using aluminium. He won't be using aluminium. He'd be using copper. So 312 uh, times two is 624. And yeah, like I can see that trunking there that he's used, um, which I'm not really sure why. They're, they're big cables. With this one, I've opened it up oh, carefully, tipped wow. out the sand, and you can see all the fuse elements. There's about 50 100 amp strips in there, all in parallel, just to give us the 5,000 amps required. Yeah, it's pretty important to have some sort of rubber matting, I would say, in this uh, situation. Let's play. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I can't remember what current he said he was going to put through this. Um, but obviously the switch itself was rated for 12 kA, so 12,000 amps. And that has what's gone first. But the current still would have gone through that fuse. So I'm assuming there would have been some sort of damage. Um, wow. More power. Oh! What was that? That was what it was. By the way, he's got that fuse open. The fuse is open, so I hope he's got some sort of perspex cover or something like that. Could just explode right. At, that's insane. Oh yes. What? Oh yeah, a couple of those little fins came out. Look at the cables flexing. Like that's crazy. Oh yeah. A little waft of smoke coming out of there. Oh, that's gonna go. That is gonna go. That switch is knackered. I think he's popped it. I think he's popped, popped it. it. There he goes. <laughs> I wonder if there is any uh, bit left in there. Could go one more on it, I bet there's still some in there. Yeah, give it one. It'd be easier to destroy that even more now. Cool, look at that. Wow. So obviously that fuse, right, is not obviously open the whole time. In normal installation, you've got that covered up and it's got like silica sand inside of it. So if you get that popping, you know, it doesn't actually explode out everywhere. It's amazing to see how that works, actually. It's incredible. Oh, look at him fly out. That is unreal. Is that it? That's got it. Um, oh, that is Oh, there might be a couple of links left. Man, I've all flown over here. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> Spat them out. I'm going to try again, is he? <laughs> wow, look at that. Our contact has taken a beating, but it's doing it, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I can't believe mm. it's still going. amazing. Well, you have a little bit of wire wool in there. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be awesome. Uh, a bit of steel wool. <laughs> 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 
Boys and their toys. He's just gone and shoved some stuff in there. I don't know if I got that one. That was awesome. <laughs> this is so dangerous, by the way. Don't attempt to do anything like live conductors on a mat. He's next to a fence, for God's sake. Like all this molten metal flying out. It's crazy. Wow. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up because I am feeling like crap with COVID. But thank you so much for introducing me to Photonic Induction. I mean, this guy is awesome. I don't even know his name. I mean, I really love these channels that don't really have these high production values, but are demonstrating some pretty amazing engineering examples. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, I would ask you to hit that subscribe button. I mean, what's really weird is that the vast majority of you watching the videos are not really subscribed to my channel, which I don't even know what it's doing. It should really be called like support channel button, whatever. But it does really help me get motivated to make more videos. Also hit that like button as well. Uh, but until next time, I would highly recommend not blowing up 5,000 amp fuses in your house. But it was very entertaining.